Hello and welcome to this presentation all about metals. As part of design and manufacture, you're expected to know a reasonable amount about different types of materials from plastics and wood through to metals. You're expected to know the names of different types of metals as well as their characteristics. We call these characteristics properties. The properties is what makes one metal different from another metal. So for example, one metal might be particularly water resistant, whereas another metal might be particularly impact resistant. A designer will make decisions based on the metal's property. So it's important that you have a handle on what the terms mean and indeed which metals have different properties and what these um, properties are. So what we're going to do is take each of these um, properties one at a time as well as looking at the different metals that you need to uh, know for design and manufacture. Once again, instead of just telling you this, we like to present this visually as well. So similar to the plastics triangle, I've made up a metals triangle. At the top we have aluminium and stainless steel. Next down we have brass and copper. And finally, at the bottom, we have mild steel and iron. More on these shortly. But first of all, I want to talk about the properties in general of these materials. We're going to start off by talking about ductility and malleability. In metal, the ductility and malleability of the material is the ability for the metal to bend and be formed into shape without tearing or cracking. A highly ductile metal will be able to be formed into really intricate shapes. If a material or a metal isn't malleable, it will not be able to be formed into shape. Similarly, with strength, strength is a bit too broad a term for us. Do we talk about its ability to take hits? Do we talk about its ability to take impacts uh, or weight or load? So really we need to be a bit more specific, but for right now we'll just talk about strength in general terms. Impact resistance, on the other hand, is its ability to take impacts, as the name suggests. The ability for the metal to take hits, um, without deforming. Hard wearing, on the other hand, is a material's ability to withstand wear and tear. So if you imagine a gear, a metal gear, engaging with another gear or a cog, the ability for those two gears to mesh together, we'd really need uh, for the metal to be hard wearing. Otherwise, the gear would wear out and the product would stop working. Strength to weight means how strong is the metal compared to how heavy the metal is. So for example, a metal such as aluminium is very, very lightweight, but is considered to be very strong. If we talk about the aesthetics, that's a fancy name for how something looks. So the aesthetics of some of these materials have the properties are such that they have a different look to them. And the designer will choose the material based on these looks. And then finally, some of the materials are better uh, from a, a water resistance point of view. The non-ferrous metals will be able to deal with um, water contact much better than the ferrous metals. Ferrous metals contain iron, which means that the metals themselves rust. So as I mentioned earlier about aluminium being very lightweight, what I want to do to try and um, help you remember that is on the left hand side, I'm going to draw a feather. This is to represent that aluminium is very light. On the other side, I'm going to draw this heavy acme weight. Stainless steel is actually very heavy. 
They have a shiny metal, silvery appearance, both aluminium and stainless steel. Um, and they're chosen for their aesthetics properties. They're considered to be really nice metals to look at. So we class that as being bright, shiny, and silver. These two are the properties of aluminium and stainless steel. Whereas brass, brass and copper, much more decorative and old fashioned look. We tend to see these metals really being used for um, situations such as old fashioned artifacts. At the bottom, as I've mentioned, mild steel and iron, both ferrous metals, which means it contains iron. They're both highly at risk of rust that occurs as a result of water. So a couple of terms just to remember as well. The ductility and a material's malleability, which simply means its ability to bend and stretch and be formed into place. So that's a very quick run through on metals, both ferrous and non-ferrous. What I'd like you to do this week, using each of the eight metals properties shown, find three products for each and write a short sentence or two as to why this property is necessary for the product. So for example, you might choose a frame of a goal, say for seven aside football. The frame of the goal you might discover to be made from aluminium. Aluminium, why is that suitable? Well, it doesn't rust and it's going to be kept outside for a long time. We know it doesn't rust because it's non-ferrous. It's very lightweight, which means uh, young kids would be able to carry the goal frame out to the football pitch. But it is also strong. Remember that term, strength to weight ratio. So that's the sort of thing I'm looking for. I'm looking for you to look up uh, different metals and different products and then to write a little short descriptor as to why you think this metal is suitable for the product itself. Okay, good luck. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you, bye.